interesting thing about Zoma, Zoma is really nothing more than a manifestation of sin. And it's accomplished by God lowering the status of a Malach and shifting his purpose. Because you see, a Malach is the consequence of a person's free will. If a person does a mitzvah, he creates a Malach. And what happens if he does a mitzvah, that Malach becomes the representation You see, malachim, the physiology of a malach changed before the sin and after the sin. You know, it changed. Before the sin, what a malach was, a malach is produced by the spheres. The sphere has agents. I mean, you know, whatever the sphere, the Anahanogas, and their agents, executive agents, are malachim. So if a sphere wants to do something, it somehow generates a malach. So the origin of a malach comes from the spheres. How? It's completely unknown. But at that stage of the game, The spheres are connected to your inner core, to the you that's you. And the malach which represents the spheres represents the you at that point. Because we, in a sense, are the spheres. Yes. So therefore, you are the representation. So the spheres is a representation of you through a malach. So if you do a mitzvah, you create a malach which represents the mitzvah. But it really, at that point, it, it, the malach really represents your essence, the unique quality that you possess that's different than anyone else, your identity. A malach represents your identity. And therefore, in that, at that point, the Malach is the closest thing possible to you. Because your identity shapes the Malach to be what it is. The Malach is shaped by you. It's designed by you. And it reflects the you which is your identity, totally. So, before the sin, before the need for Rachman, I should say, you know, the only thing that had to be decided is that you exist or not. So, if you shape the Malach that represents your choice, and your choice is to do the mitzvah, so the mitzvah is your shape. It's a shape of your identity through a malach. The malach is literally like a twin to you and to your essence, to your unique quality make that makes Nathan Nathan. The piece of you that's, that's the most outside entity that God ever made. Because even though you're, not, you're outside of God, you're inside God and not outside, but the part of you that's almost outside is the moment of the choice which creates the Malach. So the Malach is like your photograph, but it's the photograph of your identity. What that is, is We can't comprehend. But what does it mean to take a photograph of your identity? What in God's name is your identity? Conscious. But that's what you can't, some point in conscious, which I call identity, yeah. 
which is the essence of your consciousness. The identity is the essence of an individual's consciousness. Right. And the Malach is a photograph of that identity. What is it? I don't know. Because I don't know what you I don't know what an identity is. But it's the facet of you that has free will. So the point of your identity and the action of free will and your destiny are all rolled into one. You understand what I'm trying to say? It's very deep. Very deep. I mean, we can never fully grasp what it really means. Yeah, because you, you can't fully grasp what An your identity. identity is. You know? It's more than your consciousness. It's more like the consciousness of you as opposed to a consciousness of someone. You know? It is a, if I may say, it's a, it's a unis. Y O U N E S S. Whatever that is. It's, it's, it's you. It's the essence. It's in the inside of your consciousness that's you. What that is, I don't know. Because I don't even know what consciousness is. And your action, when you have free will, shapes a photograph of that you. So if that malach represents a mitzvah, you become a nitzri, eternal. the Malach disappears and in a certain sense you become the Malach it is you or it becomes you so the only thing which is left is you and the sphere you are now the product of the sphere through what used to be a malach, which actually corresponds to you. Now, do I know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Not really. I can feel it, but I don't know what that is. All of this exists before the sin. With a malach you create is the you itself. It's the photograph of you itself. And let's call that your identity which is a target of your destiny. In other words, you don't have a destiny before you do something. When you do an action, it's really a, a, a presentation of Eunice becoming something. Somehow that Eunice or your identity takes on a shape takes on the shape of the Malach and it represents Nitzchias. That's, as, that's as, as close as I can to describing what's going on. Otherwise, there's no definition of it. Because that Eunice exists forever, <clears throat> beyond time, beyond space, beyond everything. You know what I mean? So I think the best thing that I can do is just describe that, what you've created. You have created a you that takes its final form. And that you was the Malach first. And then suddenly there's some kind of merger. What was before Malach is now you. And it represents exactly what you did. A mitzvah. It's essentially okay. implanted in our consciousness? Yeah. But at what point does the external... Well, are they actually external to malachim? At what point do they get implanted on the... Yeah, they're implanted in your consciousness. You implant a feature in your consciousness, in your identity, which wasn't there before. 
And as soon as you do the action of a mitzvah, it becomes you. So at this point, that's as close as I can get. Now, what happens if you do a sin? Well, the malach is still you. It's the you that was formed because of the sin, that lived with the idea of multiplicity. And then that malach which you created by doing a sin becomes you. But it's subject to your yichud pressure of annihilation. The ma the malach annihilates eventually because of yichud pressure. But does that photograph stay within the unis for eternity? Well, the unis ceases to be a unis. At what point? At the point that the malach joins you. It suddenly joins you. It joins the you of you and it suddenly goes out of existence with you on its tail. So in other words, you become the destiny of the Malach. After the action of a mitzvah of a sin, you create some kind of photograph of your unis that was just created. And before, in the Midas Adin, you actually are a facsimile of that unis that you created through your actions. And the facsimile becomes you. And if it's a mitzvah, you live forever. I mean, you exist. It's a sin. Annihilated. You're annihilated. But the exact relationship of the Malach you in the sphere is unknown because that's the core definition of what you've done the core definition is you've created the you that you will be the you that you will manifest as your destiny but where i'm not understanding is that it sounds like from the mitzvah perspective that Malach gets imprinted in the unis or the DNA of the you, the identity, and lasts forever. But on the flip side, by in Avera, that Malach ceases no, to exist at some, some point. So what happens to that negative ce effect? It ceases that? to exist even with a mitzvah because it becomes you. The Malach dies even as a mitzvah, in a sense, or it goes away? It disappears. And the mitzvah, it disappeared. And the because in some way, which I don't understand, the Malach is you in the chosen form that you've given it. And then it merges with you and becomes you. There's something about that Malach which is not outside of you. It's created by you. It looks just like you. That malach without is your destiny. Is it external in any way? Yes, when you do the mitzvah, it's external because you didn't do the mitzvah yet. You say before you do the mitzvah. Before you do the mitzvah, so it doesn't exist really as such. In that sense, it's like external. Suddenly, when you do the mitzvah, presto. It's there, and almost instantaneously, it becomes you. So what is this thing? It's a very strange thing. And we can't answer that question until we understand who you are, your identity. Which is not something we can truly understand either. Not yet. But what I'm, the, what I'm trying to point out is this Malach is the closest thing that you will ever have to you. It's like a photograph waiting to be taken.
it's like a blueprint waiting to be and then the blueprint becomes you it becomes identical to you so it's a very strange being you know it's not like something outside of you you know what I mean? The picture of you, which is outside, which is separated from you. It's a picture, <clears throat> and it's not a picture. Something in between. That's the closest facsimile that you will ever have. Because in the end, it becomes you. So what is that? We don't have the science to figure this out. But if you do a sin, what becomes you is the reality of multiplicity. Because that's your sin. I'm outside of God. That can't exist. You know what I mean? So you become a multiplicity because the Malach suddenly takes the shape of a multiplicity, whatever that is. And as it merges with you, as you become that which you've created, you're suddenly a multiplicity. And that's destroyed by Yichud pressure. So essentially the you becomes destroyed by the Yichud pressure yeah. and that lessens his Olam Abba. And that, and it would, no, there's no Olam Abba. Well, what about a person who, who... <sighs> We're talking about before me, the Sarachim. Okay, okay. We're, we're, we're talking we're, about yeah, Mitzadin. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. In other words, by, by Mitzadin, you are your action. You either annihilate or exist. Yeah, but the reason why I, I called you a malach, because there's a point in time when you haven't decided what to be. So it's like you're a blueprint in potential. That's the malach. You're some kind of blueprint that has to be written, but is not written yet. When you write it, bingo, you become it. You know, you see, you see? Yeah. So what is that? So it's kind of, it has a separate existence from you because it can exist outside of you waiting to be had or waiting to be done. It's like something about you that's waiting to appear. And suddenly when it appears, it's you, becomes you. So it's the only thing about you that's subject to change. It's the only thing about you which moves, which changes. You go from a multiplicity your consciousness tells you are to a unicity what your consciousness tells you are so what is this multiplicity and this unicity I mean what is this how is that represented in your identity I don't know I'm describing something which I don't know because I can't understand who you are according to the Mitzadin know what I mean it's too close because I don't know what an identity is I just know that it is the, it is the you it's Nathan whoever that is <laughs> you know what I mean who is Nathan who is 
Which part of you is Nathan? I'm purely speaking as a scientist. Yeah. It, uh, how do you pinpoint that? How do you... You don't. It, but you can't. We will only know what that is, I think, when we go up in Ruchnius, mm. when we suddenly become Ruchni and develop a Kedusha. In the year 8000, you begin to know who that is. Oh, already Olam Abad. Yeah, that's the beginning of Olam Abad, yeah. really. The year 8000. So not even in 7... In the 7000 year. That's the year of Tahara, where physicality is, is actively disappearing. It's a very strange science. So then what does the Midas Arachimim do? Oh! <laughs> the Midas Arachimim changes it all. Why? Because it means that the Malach that you create in the action, either through a mitzvah or sin, it doesn't make a difference. The Malach appears differently. It maintains a certain... Individuality? Yes. Mm -hmm. A certain entity individuality. External. Something ex there's something about the Malach which is external to you and remains external. So your sin does is your sin, but it doesn't become you. It's like you doing it and it's you. But it doesn't become you. When you do a mitzvah, it's you. You did the mitzvah, but it doesn't become you. It has some kind of an, an identity by itself outside of you. Mm. And this is the problem. This is the problem why you have to have the Mashiach. Because as long as the Midas Arachimim guides the universe, the Mala who is you is also not you. And you can't be built Olam Abba. You see what I'm saying? That angel has to be you to give you its destiny. But since that angel somehow represents something outside of you, you know, somehow your action cannot be you. You know what I mean? It has to maintain its own identity so that when it disappears or whatever you it appears alone and doesn't take you with it is that the idea where Hashem in like Chagadia says and then HaKadosh Baruch Hu will show to the Malach Mavis that's the end of Rachamim yeah that's when he removes Rachamim and then the the angels can become you without external good so what changes, therefore, is not the action. You do the action either way. What changes is the malach that's the result of your action. With the Midas Adin, the malach never detaches from you and eventually becomes you to either be annihilated or eternal. But when you have the Midas Arachimim, the malach becomes you, it becomes your reflection, it becomes your photograph. But there's something there about, about the Malach that remains outside of you. Is that what allows us to continue existing? Because yes. Of the because if it becomes me, the, the uh, Malach Chavala, that's it, gone. Immediate annihilation. Right. Does that make sense? On some level, I understand it. I, I got a long way to go, but yes. But it makes uh, yeah, sense. Yeah. So, even though we don't even know what this Malach is, what we do know is what the difference of this Malach is in the Midas Adin and the Midas Arachimim. In the Midas Adin, this Malach is closest to you. It is you in potential. And in the Midas Arachimim, 
this Malach is not you in potential and never becomes you in potential. So it dies by itself. But since we're talking about something that we don't even have a language for, you, identity, what, what is, who is Nathan? <laughs> so we can only describe it. Well, we can describe its essential property. But not. Is it absolutely you or it's only relatively you? That's, you know. So God had to change the nature of the Malach, not your nature. It's the Malach that he targets, that represents you. He has to create something that represents you without it being you, for you to survive. And I think I said it, that describes it. But didn't he also change us physically, in a sense? He took us from a state yeah, of that, but, but that's, that's all not... preparation. We're talking about you at the, at the ultimate. Oh, you're saying you as in consciousness. Yeah, yeah. It's a, we're talking about you in consciousness, mm. way past everything. Yeah. So I think you understand it. Someone does. Someone. I never, I never fully understand the Rebbe's uh, And that's what's being done. So the target of Rachel and Mordin is that Malach. How close is that Malach to you? How close is it to your identity, which is affected by what you did, a mitzvah or sin? And what is affected? whether you are a multiplicity or are a unicity. What you mean? That's the key thing, which is somehow in your consciousness. But like the Torah says, I didn't know you are, so no eye has seen. What it means is no eye can understand this. Because we're talking about a zone, a domain, which you have no tefisa, you have no ability to understand it. You're so far away from that domain that, that I can barely describe it. And since I'm pretty good at describing things, I can give you some idea. In other words, what's the definition of you as a multiplicity and you as a, uh, what, a monicity when you are one, you know? What is the difference in the you? No, we have no idea. We don't know. I mean, wouldn't it be the way we relate to God in some sense? The arc the way our consciousness can perceive God's oneness. Yeah, that's the result. That's the result, so. Depending on who you are. Is how you perceive. Perceive God, yeah. So you're, you could be stuck in a state. Of multiplicity. But. And then you aggravate the ego pressure in that state. Yeah, but isn't there, because of Rachamim, doesn't God allow for total existence, for total eternity, there to remain some form of multiplicity? Meaning a person who does lots of mitzvahs, but he does some sins in his life, he still has a little bit of multiplicity that stays Yes, with. a certain amount must remain, or else you wouldn't exist. You would be totally inside God. For you to be totally inside God, fixed. Then there is no us. Then there's no Nathan. You and see, that, so. you're caught between being Nathan and not being Nathan. Mm -hmm. What is that difference? I don't know. So not being, Na being Nathan 
means that you're outside of God. In some way. Right, we don't know that. We don't know. We don't know what the unis is. We don't know what the boundary is. Look, I'm either you, you're either you, or you're not you. That's, that's two choices. Which means, in our language, you're either outside of God or you're inside God. But that's not true. On some level, it's like what God says about what I define or the Mava. God says to you the famous statement. This is, I don't know how I got the statement, I'll be honest with you. It just came to me. God says, I am you, but you are not me. What? Make up your mind. No. You're an interim being. You're caught in the middle. How's that possible? Where is the boundary of God and where is the boundary of Nathan? No idea. Right. In a certain sense, you have a boundary. This is Nathan and this is God. But in the real sense, you have no boundary. It's all God. Both are true. <laughs> and that's the problem with Namda Sufa. That's why you can never, meaning it's a, a problem that can't be solved. No, you can remove the problem, but you can't solve it. Exactly. Remo yeah. In other words. Be, what I, sorry, what I meant was, it's not some, meaning the problem of creating a Zulaso without Namadi Sufa seemingly cannot be done. Because then there's, meaning God, if he's creating a Zulaso, the Namba de Chisufa is automatic because anything that yeah. is outside of him automatically will have that feeling. You've given that cheer. Yeah. So this is very subtle. Level deeper. Between Din and Wachabed. Yeah. See, now we've gone to a different yeah, place. We the... I, I didn't compare you to God and you're in outside when I talk about God we're talking about you before you do a mitzvah or the before you act and you after you act well what's the difference tremendous difference so according to the Midas Adin that represents one form of Malach according to the Midas Rachman, that Malach was changed and now you are represented by a different Malach. Very subtle. See, people, most people, they have no idea, you know what I mean, that Rachman is a thing. You know, most people think, most people think a person does something bad, and God says, and the person says, I'm sorry, so God says, okay, I'm going to overlook it. You know, I'm going to forgive you. That does not happen. Because they don't realize that when you acted, you did something. You created something. You created a Yeshmi Ayan. A Malach. What? A Malach. A Malach. Who didn't exist before. Who existed only in potential. So you did something with your mitzvah. You can't say to God, well, I didn't do it. You did something. But what you did becomes different in the Midas Adin and the Midas Rachman. In the Midas Adin, nothing can be changed. Yeah. 
Because it's the, it's the closeness of which the Malach is to you. You can't change it. It is you. I mean, it's only outside of you because you haven't acted yet. But really, it is you. It is and it isn't. You know? But the, in the Midas of Achimim, it is not you. Before. And after. And after. In the Midas of Din, sorry. It's, it, it, and it's, the way the mystery of that is appears in the Psukim. Where? In the tale, when you say Tilim. In your benching, Hazoyim bedimo Bavino yiksoro means he who sows in sorrow will one day harvest in joy. What's the sorrow? Because it means that what you've created is not part of you. So just like you've created a sin which doesn't become part of you, you've created a mitzvah which doesn't become part of you. So how can you get Oilam Abba? You know, it's, you have to be kept at a distance from what you do. And if you're not created at a distance, you're annihilated. There must be a distance between you and your action. So what is the Hazor and Bedima? Uh, so Hazor and Medina, so yeah. which means if you do mitzvahs and you're Zorea, you, you sow and you do mitzvahs, it's Bedima. Why? Because it can't act it can't. on you. It can't give you a Right. The Midas Harachmam, just like it suspends annihilation, it suspends eternalization. So then what is the arena part? Reno, because well, then, mm. because God changes the malach back. You're saying yeah. after he gets rid of rachim, it goes back to din. Does that mean everything that was external comes internally? Yeah, that means however they did the din is. Maybe that's how existence gets elevated in the next world. Yes, because once it becomes a part of us, then there's a higher level of existence. Yes. So the Malach first, by then, is so close to you. And by Vachimim, he's pushed outside and never becomes you. The sin doesn't become you, and the mitzvah doesn't become you. That's Padimah. That means it's, even though you're sowing, you're putting seeds in the ground, they can't grow. They never become plants. That's why it's Padimah with tears. So no matter what you do, it has no effect on your destiny. So it's Hazor and You're sowing with tears. Why? Because you'll never get a plant out of it. But Berina Yiksoyu, but when you come to your harvest, it then comes back into you. So it's Berina. You are to rejoice because you are capable of getting Oilam Haba. But as long as the Midas of Achimim, the Shoilet, controls, you can't build Olam Haba. Olam Haba is not buildable by the Midas of the Achimim. It's a very important principle. So it's not being built now? No. So when does it get built? Meaning, does it get built in one day? All the, the things we've done then become? Yeah. In one shot. So there are two stages of Oilam Habo. There's a stage where no matter what you do, you can never build it. It doesn't grow. And there's a stage where it does grow, where it be your mitzvah becomes you. It's a very deep concept that the mitzvah Rachim affects not only sins, but mitzvahs. It's a very important concept. Most of the time we think God is having mercy on us. How? He's having mercy on us towards Rachamim. But that's not even true. He's faulting us 
even in our mitzvahs, he doesn't allow your mitzvahs to gain the energy of becoming you. So you're paying. The price of your salvation is that you can't even build anything. Rachamim is a law of existence. It's not a law of sins. It doesn't function by sins. It functions by existence. Because it represents a certain cycle where you cannot be your destiny. You understand what I'm saying? It's a very so although it saves us on the one side from eradication, it harms us in the sense right. that we can't become our destiny. Because, because it's, it's, it's a the, double-edged sword. It's a law, because it's the law of existence. It's the law of existence. You don't have one law for Rachel and another law for Din. You know, it's what God has to make a law for both sins and mitzvahs. And that's your relationship with this Malach. Very subtle. But through Teshuva, we can remove the external yeah. ones and then remove that multiplicity of Right, us. yeah. You've got to get rid of the sin. I figured it's out a long time ago because I realized there has to be a an equality because what you do in the midst of Acham is affect existence itself not just the sin and whatever you do to protect you from your sins God has to protect you from what from your mitzvahs don't you understand? That's what it means, Hazur and Bedimma. Because if you're sowing seeds, you should be happy. It's going to go up in plants. No, you're sowing seeds in the ground that will never grow up. <laughs> as long as under the tutelage of the Midas of Achmem. Rachamim is a killer. The angel of death. Well, in a way, yeah. I've read it. Man. So, yeah. But I told you a very deep concept. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure.